Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? This is some very, very interesting news. According to reports, the WBO, they're going to make Naoya Inoue the mandatory for Stephen Fulton's WBO belt because Inoue is the undisputed champion at Bantamweight. The way the WBO sets it up is if you're the super champion in one division and decide to move up, you instantly become the mandatory at that new division. And it should be set up this way for every organization, the WBA, the WBC, and the IBF. But this is big news, man. And like I always tell you, the old media's curse continues. Every single time old media starts to hype up a particular fighter on the hope list, they end up putting a bigger target on that fighter's back. And 95% of the time, that fighter ends up losing shortly after old media starts to praise that fighter higher than they ever praised him before. I remember the year that Floyd Mayweather fought Manny Pacquiao, the fight that was billed the fight of the decade. ESPN, they were like some of the main people that were accusing Floyd Mayweather of ducking Manny Pacquiao. Even the year that Floyd Mayweather fought Manny Pacquiao, before the fight was announced, they were still accusing him of ducking Manny Pacquiao. So what happens? As soon as that fight is announced and Floyd Mayweather completely beats Manny Pacquiao decisively, they give the Fighter of the Year award not to Floyd Mayweather, but to Ronda Rousey. And the same year they gave her the award, she got knocked out. As soon as old media starts saying Roman Gonzalez was the best fighter in the world over fighters like Andre Ward and Terrence Crawford, he got knocked out. I remember all this like it was yesterday. Sergey Kovalev, before he lost to Andre Ward, they even had him. Some websites had him at number one pound for pound. Shortly after that, he loses to Andre Ward. Old media had Nonito Donaire number two on the pound for pound list right behind Manny Pacquiao. This was when Floyd Mayweather was on his hiatus. Shortly after they put him up there, at least once he was forced to fight Guillermo Rigondeaux, he lost. As soon as old media started putting Canelo above Terrence Crawford, saying that he was pound for pound the best fighter in the world. He lost, which is pretty ironic because Terrence Crawford has survived all of these fighters that old media was calling pound for pound over him. And yet he's still unbeaten and he's still pound for pound the best fighter in the world. But now because old media, they have a new fighter on the hope list that they're hyping up. They're trying to put Anoe above Crawford. And I can tell you guys right now, Anoe is not going to avoid the curse. He's not going to avoid old media's curse. If he fights Stephen Fulton, he's losing that fight hands down. I don't do a lot of predictions. I usually only do predictions if I really feel sure I know who's going to win. But this one to me is one of the easiest predictions. Now, it's still not official if Anoe is going to accept the assignment, if he's going to push for the mandatory spot, but if he activates it, he's losing this fight to Stephen Fulton, I'm telling you guys right now. Anoe, once again, he's a good fighter. But in that first fight with Donaire, there were times when he was getting outboxed by Donaire. Inoue was supposed to make that first fight look as easy as Rigo made it look when he was fighting a much younger in his prime. Once again, quote unquote, pound for pound, number two best fighter in the world, Donaire. Inoue was supposed to make the fight look just that easy. And he made it look more like it was Ali Frazier. Now, he did make the rematch against Donair look very easy. He knocked him out in impressive fashion. But there are levels to this, guys. And if, once again, he struggled even for a couple of rounds against a 40-year-old Nonito Donair, can you imagine what Stephen Fulton is going to do to this man? Inoue is a really, really good offensive fighter. But a good offense doesn't really mean a whole lot if you don't have a great defense to back it up, especially when you are fighting against elite level opponents or champions. And as Floyd Mayweather can tell you, when you're moving up multiple weights and fighting against guys that are naturally bigger than you, now having a good defense is even more important. It has to be better than it was when you were at the smaller weight classes, which is exactly why Roman Gonzalez and Donaire got knocked out when they moved up in weight because they did not have the defense to deal with those guys that were bigger and stronger. And this is the reason why Floyd Mayweather can fight somebody like Canelo, who's 20 pounds bigger than him, hits much harder than he does, and beats them easy. 
because of his reflexes, his intelligence, his defense. So now, guys, the ball is in Inouye's court. He decides if he really wants to fight against Stephen Fulton or not. He has no reason to not take the fight. He's going to be Fulton's mandatory. And Fulton has no reason to move up to a higher weight class or something like that. This is the biggest fight. This is the fight that's going to take Stephen Fulton's career to the next level. You know, I feel the reason why NOA is even moving up is because he's struggling to make the way that Bantam weight. We've seen him struggle um, in his last weigh-in for his uh, fight against um, whatever the guy's name was for the undisputed or undisputed. So even though it was time for him to move up and wait because his body was telling him to do so, I will still give him a lot of credit if he gets in the ring with Stephen Fulton. And if NOA can pull off the upset, because it would be an upset in my eyes, if he could beat Stephen Fulton, he is definitely the truth. And he's definitely considered top five pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. Let's see if Inoue takes the fight. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues so make sure you guys go to the fighterfirm.com all right now check this out guys if you're looking to repair eczema scars burns and bruises dark spots and blemishes the fever blisters diabetic ulcers this right here is the perfect product for you guys it's called elo de key face and body oil athletes and top ranking boxers they're also using it after training to reduce swelling inflammation and to ease the pain so get yours today go to elodekey.com like them on facebook and follow them on instagram My name is Chris and I'm all the way here from Anchorage, Alaska at South Carolinas and I'm here for my second treatment of SMP. Well, I was sitting at home one day and uh, going over my Facebook page and they have different, you know, like advertisements popping up and I saw one for SMP and I saw some pictures of some guys, you know, a before and after and I was looking at that and they, you know, it caught my attention so I Googled it. SMP, nothing showed up in my area. So, uh, you know, I did a little more research and all of a sudden, Scout Carolinas popped up in the web browser. So I started uh, watching his videos and uh, seeing all the reaction from all the other people. We talked on the phone, we made appointments and everything. I sent him pictures and uh, uh, he looked at them and I was like, can you fix this? And, uh, you know, he pretty much said, no problem. My first session, uh, he made me feel extremely comfortable. Uh, it was almost like I was talking to family. He started and uh, during the whole, whole treatment, we talked and, you know, about our families and our life and, you know, and things that he does and things that I do. And before I know it, the first session was over. When you see someone doing something that they love, uh, as much as I see Enoch Glover love what he does, uh, it shows in his work. I wouldn't point anyone in any other direction but here to North Carolina, Scout Carolinas, to get this done.